Hello and welcome to Gel with Mark. In today's video I will be showing you how I created this sinister looking fellow on the gel plate, expanding upon charcoal image transfer which I showcased in my previous video. I will be combining this on the gel plate with the addition of colour using paint brushes and finishing off with a cornflower resist technique to create this grungy background. Shall we crack on? Let's go! Okay, so we need to talk about materials and what we're going to need for this type of print. So first of all, you need some tracing paper or baking paper or copy paper, something with a shiny surface, anything like that will work, I believe. You will also need some form of charcoal, whether that be in pure form or pencil form. You might need a smudge stick if you want to do some blending. You're also going to need an image. Now, in my previous video, I had a comment by Sylvie Noah and she asked why I always do frightened faces and never happy ones. So I thought I'd find a clown and a happy one. And this one I thought looked quite happy. So we're also going to need a gel plate. We're going to need some paint brushes. And what else do we need? Oh yeah, we're going to need a brayer. And we're definitely going to need a selection of paints. I will go through the colours later on and the, the brand. Maybe need a putty rubber or eraser or some sort of an eraser just to clean up around the charcoal image. And the last thing we might need is some copy paper. Okay, let's gel. I want to almost forgot, I'm trying out this Derwent Pastel Pencil, which is um, carbon black. Um, I want to see if this will transfer and give me nice sharp lines for really fine details. So the first thing we need to do is draw the charcoal image. I'm not going to go into this too much. There should be a link above, so click that if you want to see my previous video about this. Um, I'm using the Derwent pencil here just to do the um, finer details to see if it will come out any better than um, the normal charcoal. Uh, and then I'm just filling in all the black areas with the charcoal. Now I was thinking um, most of my work I gravitate towards portraiture, but um, you can use this technique with any type of um, theme. So you can, if you do landscapes, this will work fine with landscapes. If you do abstract, you could do you know parts of your abstract work with uh, this technique as well. So taking away the reference image, this is my charcoal image now. So I've got a good coverage of charcoal. I didn't feel I needed to use the blending stick on this one because I liked the way it looked so I didn't use it and I'm just cleaning up around the outside of the image with the putty rubber or eraser just so I don't get um, some dark finger marks all over it so now straight onto the gel plate charcoal side down give it a good rub I use a glass to help with contact give it a really good good going over and I noticed that the Derwent pencil didn't work that well um, something I need to investigate should have worked I just added a bit more charcoal with the normal pure charcoal just to see if I could get a bit more detail in another rub and it came out fine so let's talk about color so with my images I tend to try and restrict myself to not too many different colors so I don't have overwhelm so I tend to get a similar color for highlights midtones and um, shadows and vary the values so on this one i've gone for azo yellow deep um, i'm also going to go for a bit of turquoise green i'm going to go for gold ochre burnt amber some ultramarine violet uh, and that's a little bit of primary magenta cadmium red brilliant blue Titanium buff deep, titanium white, and some lamp black. So the acrylic brand is um, Amsterdam Standard Series, which is by Royal Talons and Pebio Studio High Viscosity Acrylics. That's what I use there, pretty affordable, and there's a great range of colours. So when I first started doing gel plate printing, I always just used straight out of the tube. Um, as my colour but recently I've started playing about with mixing uh, my colours a bit more. I've been learning a little bit about colour harmony and um, how you add the colours together to create more of a harmonious mix. 
Uh, I'm going to do a video about this um, soon, so I won't go into that too much. Now, um, when I'm doing my images, I always generally have a printout of the reference image next to me so I can um, you know, look at it and refer to it. This is the brush I'm using. Um, I don't really know the actual correct term for this brush, but it's a kind of blunt edged with an angle so you can get into um, the kind of corners and stuff a little bit better. So the way I look at this is I always look at it in a reverse method. So it's like light or highlights to shadows um, when painting the image. So it's a little bit of a tricky one to get your head around um, when you're first starting out. But once you've got it um, in your head, it's it's pretty simple. So I'm doing all the highlights here with uh, this light, light yellow. Uh, it's the Azo Yellow Deep. I've added a little bit of the gold ochre to, to kind of pair it with that a bit later on in the image. Um, and I think I added a touch of, of titanium white as well. So I'm just referring to the reference image uh, to see where I need to do all of these, the brightest highlights. Now, I've made it a little bit tricky for myself because I haven't reversed the image that I'm referring to. It's the opposite because I've obviously gone off of this image first to do my charcoal picture, but then once I've put it on to the plate, it's reversed it again. Um, but it's all right. It's fine. I just get a little bit confused at times and just have to rub it out now and again. So now um, I'm just using a very fine brush here to get some you know more smaller details in and uh, you just saw me mix the kind of mid-tone color so i've um, taken some of the previous color so the highlights color and i've just added more gold ochre to it um, to to give a a mid-tone and i'm now going to start placing that onto the gel plate and Again, sometimes I, I waver on how I do this technique. So sometimes I will dry the highlights layer completely before adding the mid-tones. But with this one, I kind of just went with adding it whilst it was still wet. So um, to get a bit of a blend going on, I wanted to see how it came would come out really. And that's really why I was doing it. And, and quickness as well, to be fair. I'm just going to speed up the video at this point just to quicken up the uh, the video a little bit. Now I wanted the eyes to be quite bright on this uh, image so I've gone for the ultramarine violet. I've mixed it with a little bit of titanium white. And I've just put in the pinpoint highlights with a, a of titanium white with a very fine brush. Now I'm also using that very fine brush just to paint in the eyes of this image. Now I get the impression a lot of people think you can't use a hairdryer on a gel plate. Now I've used a hairdryer the whole time I've had a gel plate. Um, I just make sure it's on the lowest temperature it can go on and the softest kind of pressure it can go on. And as long as you don't hold it in one place the whole time, it's fine. I've never had a problem with it on my, my gel plate whatsoever. So here I'm just filling in the, the, the whites now, or it's kind of like the titanium buff I think I'm using because it's in the shadow areas. Um, and this is where, you know, you can start blocking in a little bit because you've added the details and um, a nice bright pair of red lips as it's a happy clown which is just a mixture of cadmium red and primary uh, magenta with a touch of titanium white now that's the lips done so i can start filling in the uh, mid-tone area in the makeup part of the the clown uh, this is just a uh, titanium uh, buff deep 
may I think I added a tiny bit of the uh, Azo yellow deep highlight color to it as well but a very very minimal amount and I'm always referring to my reference image to see uh, where I need to put these mid-tone areas it doesn't have to be exact it's just a, you know it's just a reference it just helps guide me where I need to to put that type of color or that tone I'm using the same red color for the hair that I use for the lips um, as it's a clown and I'm using quite you know loose gestural strokes here there is one thing that I did I, I made a mistake here I should have carried on and join the red parts together but I was thinking that that would just be a bit darker in the finished print but it didn't come out that way um, you learn from your mistakes I guess now I'm just putting in that little um, line of highlight on the, the rim of the hat and I've just added a tiny bit of lamp black to the uh, gold ochre and this is where now um, you can do you know you can start not having to worry too much about making mistakes because you're just blocking in you're doing the background color so here is just titanium white you know it's the big bit of makeup area and you know you can just slap it on it doesn't matter just go straight over the top of all your other bits you've painted you'll get the little kind of parts where your your brush is separated on the the previous layer and you'll get you know it will shine through and this is what i like about this technique you need know, that it kind of brings out the the gestural marks quite a lot so it's always nice to balance up the kind of color harmony i believe uh, in a picture so i've been using quite a lot of warm tones so for his clothing i decided to use the cooler tones of these greens and these blues so I've been using um, turquoise green for this shirt and I'm also using um, the brilliant blue for his jacket now I've also added again some of the azo yellow deep mixture and gold ochre to these two colors to harmonize all of the colors within this image uh, like I said, I'm going to do a video on this to kind of explain it a little bit. It's something that I've only recently become aware of, so it's all a bit new to me. Um, but it's quite interesting. Now we're getting into that stage of the print where it is literally just filling in all the rest of the exposed plate areas. So it's the blocking in stage, which is the shadows, the darker tones. So I just... I just slap it all on, don't care too much, uh, just cover it all as much as you can. I mean, I might use a little bit too much paint on my prints. It's something I need to maybe look into a bit more. The only issue really with it is finding a really good paper because with the amount of paint that I use, sometimes you do get buckling depending on the paper. So I'm always looking to try and find different papers. I've recently found something called poster board, I believe it's termed as, by Sea Whites, which is two sheets of cartridge paper and it's sandwiched onto like a two mil board. I'm not sure what it's made of, but that seems to be pretty good. It holds up well with the amount of paint that I throw at it from this gel plate. So I had a little bit of this extra shadow tone left over. so. I thought I'll just stick it on the hair as well because hopefully as the red, reds are generally quite transparent or semi-transparent and if you put a lighter colour on the darker colour you get a kind of highlight that comes through on the print so hopefully fingers crossed that'll come out nice. Now with the uh, hat just blocking it in again with the uh, burnt umber I probably, in hindsight, should have done two tones on this a little bit. I think that comes out a little bit flat. It, it came out well enough. Just something to note, you know. Always make little notes, always trying to improve. So we've done all the blocking in. That's the clown done. Now we've got to think about the background. So, 
if you've not tried this before or seen this, this is just corn starch, corn flour, depending on what part of the world you're in. You put your wet acrylic paint down, you add a bit of a dusting of this corn flour and then you brayer it in together. Now, it kind of looks like it's not working. It dries the paint pretty quick because you're using the, the corn flour. But just what you need to do is just keep adding layers of paint, adding layers of corn flour and brayering it on. And mixing it in and where you'll find you'll get a resist where the corn flour is it will resist with the layer of paint below I think I've explained that right and you can combine the colors from either light to dark or dark to light well, that's how I've done it with my experiments this was a bit more of a, a light to dark kind of situation I'm also using up some of my extra paint that I've got left over. Now, this is one of my little things. I always overmix paint and I just end up with copious amounts of leftover paint. I know you can use collage papers and stuff or make collage papers, but I don't really collage. Might be something I'll investigate further on down the line. Anyway, this is my last layer, which is a dark grey. So I'm hoping you get a bit of a nice grungy look. So the paper I'm using for this print is Canson Mixed Media Imagine 200 GSM. It's nice and thick, takes a lot of moisture. And I'm also pulling with these two gel mediums. They're both matte gel mediums, but the Liquitex is really thick and the Galleria is what I would probably call a liquid matte medium. It's quite, you know, let's see, it pours out quite a lot. So I tend to mix them together to get a kind of in-between viscosity, I guess is the right word. And then I just whack it all on. Again, I probably lose too much, but I'd rather have too much than too little because, you know, I, I like a nice clean pool. For me, to get a nice pool is good coverage and it's drying time. That would be my two little tips. Now, on with the paper. I've got a little bit of a guideline at the top here. I've just got a bit of masking tape which I always line up my paper with to give me kind of a nice central print. Now, I always put some weight on my prints. So I have three books and I have a stack of slate dining table coasters. Now I left this to dry for about an hour and 20 minutes. And when I took the weights off, I felt that it was still a bit wet. So I did actually give it a quick whiz over with the hairdryer on the back again with a higher heat just to make sure and see that's what I'm talking about nice nothing on the plate that's a perfect pull nothing I love it so that's what you got so you know the background came out pretty well I, I was quite pleased with that um, and as you can see what I was talking about with the uh, the hair area I was expecting that to be a bit darker, but I got that little break. Now, I would have preferred that to have been all red, but it doesn't matter. You can see the kind of gestural marks from the charcoal, and then you get the gestural marks from the paintbrush. I'd probably say that the tones could be a bit more separated. They're the, the kind of mid-tone and highlight have, have blended a bit too much, maybe. It's always experimenting, you know. Maybe I should have just dried the highlight first and then put the mid-tone on instead of blending it but I'm really happy with this print it was meant to be a happy print <laughs> but uh, I think it's a bit more sinister than happy um, like I said at the start I think it's something to do with the eyes the eyes look all glassy but then again it might just be because it's a clown and clowns can look sinister don't they you either love them or you hate them well that's the video I hope you liked it please like subscribe leave me a comment with uh, any information you want or the ideas you might have. And uh, I'll see you next time. Happy printing.